Welcome to the video where I fix the P2122 code on a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta. The troubleshooting in this video will work on many makes and models, but primarily VWs and Audis of about the same year. This car would drive fine for a while, and then the engine light and the EPC light would come on, and the car would go into limp mode. After shutting the car off for a while, it would go back to normal. After scanning the codes with my ODB11 scanner, I found that the P2122 code uh, was present. The definition on the app said the throttle pedal position sensor switch D circuit had a low input. After looking around on the internet for a while, it seemed like the throttle pedal was the culprit. Unfortunately, after $125 later, uh, I was driving around with a brand new pedal, but it didn't last long. It drove great for about a week, and then it went into limp mode again, and this time for good. One nice thing about the ODB11 app that I'm using, it actually gives you the vehicle-specific definition of the P code. Here, the video that's playing is me removing the throttle from the car. I'm not really going to get into that because there's a lot of videos uh, on the internet showing how to re replace the throttle pedal. What we're doing is trying to get to the wiring that goes to the throttle pedal because that's what we're going to troubleshoot for the rest of this video. Since I had already replaced the throttle pedal with a new one uh, and the code P2122 had come back, at this point I had made up the, my mind that it was either the wiring or the ECI. Uh, here I'm showing you how the throttle position sensor works. Uh, once you push on the throttle pedal, it sends a signal to the ECM. The ECM sends a signal to the throttle actuator, and that, that moves the butterfly. At that point, the throttle position sensor sends a signal to the ECM, and the ECM checks it. Uh, now, the throttle pedal is very important, and it could be dangerous if the throttle pedal shorted out. Uh, so, what the automotive companies have done is they've actually have the throttle position sensor and the accelerator position sensor send out two different voltages. And the ECM compares those voltages to make sure there is a spread between them, and then it says it's okay. Otherwise, it'll go into limp mode and pop a code. Uh, the accelerator position sensor has two sensors in it and it can pop one of four codes. Here is a wiring diagram that I scrounged off the internet and it's showing the two sensors, the G79 sensor and the G85 sensor along with the wiring diagram going to the plug. Uh, here is a picture of the plug. Um, so there is one sensor that uses pin 1, 5, and 6, and there is another sensor that uses pin 2, 3, and 4. And those are the wires we're going to be troubleshooting. So when we start off, uh, we can start off with a voltage meter and uh, some jumper wires. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find pin number one, and I'm going to put a jumper in pin number one, and then I'm going to set up my voltage meter uh, to volts DC, and I've got it set at 20 volts. Uh, then I will check from that jumper wire that I put in pin location number one, and I'll check that to ground. At that point, that should have five volts with the key turned on. And you can see I'm, I'm grounding on a pin um, where the throttle pedal is mounted, and you can see I have five volts there. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is check the five volts on pin number two. Uh, so when I put the jumper in pin number two and I check from the jumper down to the ground, I should get five volts on that also. Uh, so that will show me that the wires going to my ECM on the five volt side are good. So the next thing that I'll do is I'm going to check the ground and I'll do that by jumping the five volt pin to its corresponding ground pin. So in this case, I'm going to put a jumper in pin number one and a jumper in pin number five. Uh, and then I'll check across that with my voltmeter. Now I should be able to get five volts across there. And what that's doing is now that I know that my wires are good, uh, my hot wires are good, my five volt wires are good. Now, if I check between um, the voltage wire and the ground wire, um, and I get five volts, it means the ground wire is good. So here I'm going between pin number two and pin number three. So that is the hot wire, the five volt wire, and the ground wire for the second sensor. And you can see here that when I check across there, I'm getting five volts. So that means that my five volt wires, my two 
positive wires are good and my two negative wires or ground wires are good. So the next thing I'm going to do is check the signal wires and I'm going to do that with an ODB checker. At this point, since I have the plug unplugged from the accelerator pedal, uh, the ECM is looking for a little bit of voltage on both signal wires. And when I hook up my ODB11 reader and I scan, it comes up with two alarms. Now the, the alarms are 2122 and 2127, and both of those are voltage lows and that's exactly what we should be seeing with the pedal disconnected and no jumper wires in there. They should both see zero voltage which should be too low for those signal wires. So that is correct. Those, those are the right alarms that we should be seeing. So at this point now I'm going to run five volts to the ground one at a time for each sensor and if I run from pin six to pin one, um, five volts, what that should do is that should be higher than it ever wants to see. It should be seeing five volts. So if I run a uh, scan, that should show me that I get 2122, which is sensor low on one sensor, and 2128, which is sensor high on the other sensor. And that's exactly what I should be seeing at this point um, because I'm getting 5 volts, which is higher than it ever should be. At this point, I know that 5 out of my 6 wires are good. So I'm going to do my final test. I'm going to jump between pin number 2 and pin number 4. That should make the second sensor go high. Uh, so after doing a scan, I noticed that I should have gotten a P2123 sensor high and a P2127 sensor low, but I didn't. I still got a P2122, and that means that the signal wire on pin number four has a problem. Now that either means there's something burnt out in the ECM or the wire is bad. So what you can do is you can do an ohm check between the plug and the ECU. But what I did was I actually looked up the wire a little ways and I found some black electrical tape and I realized that somebody had made a splice. Uh, so they had had an issue at some point with the wiring and they re-spliced the wiring and one of the wires was disconnected. Now I was lucky because I was able to find that really easily. You may have to trace that wire or that set of wires all the way up uh, to the ECM to see if you can fix it. To fix this, I actually removed all of those splices and soldered them together and put heat shrink tubing around them. So that made a much stronger, better electrical connection and hopefully this will not be a problem for me in the future. So hopefully this helped you troubleshoot your wiring without using an oscilloscope like I've seen in quite a few videos. A lot of people don't have oscilloscopes, but most people have ODB readers and voltmeters. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.